Hello everyone, this is a Notifier AFC 600 fire alarm control panel. These were first introduced in the late 1990s and was designed for small to medium sized facilities. At its core, the AFC 600 is an AFP 400, but it introduces a new adjustable protocol known as flash scan. The Notifier AFP panels use System Center's classic loop interface protocol, otherwise known as CLIP. This protocol can monitor up to 198 devices per SLC loop. 99 detectors, and 99 modules. It was used by Notifier, Firelight, FCI, Faraday, Harrington Signal, and even EST for a brief period of time, amongst many other companies. In the late 1990s, System Sensor would introduce the Advanced Protocol, which was rebranded under Notifier as FlashScan. The FlashScan protocol can monitor up to 318 devices per loop, 159 detectors, and 159 modules. It was designed to be faster and more resistant to noise than CLIP protocol. A full loop of 318 devices could be pulled in only a second or two. The flash scan protocol also introduced a new lineup of devices that had bicolor LEDs. These devices were pulled green under normal conditions and pulled red when in an alarm. So let's jump right into this. For this demonstration, all initiating devices are compatible with flash scan protocol, but can also run on CLIP in retrofit applications. Right here is an MBG12LX pulse station. This is an FST751 heat detector, and it's on a B224RB relay base. In a real system, this relay base could be connected to a door holder or some equipment, which can be shut off when this detector alarms. Right here is an FSH751 harsh environment detector. This sensor is used in environments where a lot of non-smoke particulates, like sawdust or water mist, can cause nuisance alarms in standard detectors. All this is, is a photoelectric detector with filters and an air intake fan that filters out non-smoke particles and only lets smoke and air in. The fan runs intermittently, and it's powered by the panel. Got a few more things down here. This is an FSP751 photoelectric smoke detector. And next to it is an FSP751T photoelectric smoke detector with a thermal sensor and it's mounted on a system sensor B501BHT sounder base. Got an S1224MC Spectral Classic Strobe, and on the table is a P1224MC Horn Strobe. And lastly, we have an FDU80 LCD Enunciator. This Enunciator is used on many notifier panels after the AFC 600, including the NFS and Firewarden series. It also works on the AFP 400, running firmware version 3.62 or higher. So let's start with these two detectors. This FSP751 is programmed as a duct detector. Instead of a general alarm, it indicates a supervisory condition at the panel. This 751T is configured for pre-alarm, which can sound an alert signal to the panel, which is not a general alarm, but it's enough to sound its local sounder base and strobe. So let's start with this detector. There's the supervisory. Detectors alarmed, but no signals are sounding. So let's air it out real quick and it should go back to normal. There we go, system's back to normal. Now for this detector, we'll spray just a small amount of smoke to trigger pre-alarm. Alright, so when this detector alarmed, there was a pre-alarm display on the panel and enunciator, the strobe flashed, and the sounder base could be heard. For instance, in a dormitory room, if some deodorant accidentally reaches the detector, it'll sound an alarm in the room itself, but all of the signals on the system remain silent. So this could be helpful in situations where you may not want to evacuate everybody for what could be an accident or a minor incident. Now let's on the system in full alarm. Here we go. So 
system is silenced. Strobes continue to flash. There's an MDL sync module down there. So now let's activate the seed detector. Sounds again, this time from the enunciator. So the sounder base also activates in general alarm. These two relays control the sounder base for general alarm conditions. But as seen before, the detector can also activate the sounder base on its own. Now let's test this harsh detector. We can track its alarm status from the panel. Go to read status, read point, enter the detector address. This is loop 2, address 2. Okay, it's at 0% right now, which is normal. This is a harsh environment detector, so it might take more time to activate, but we'll see. Okay, this isn't really working, so we'll just magnet test it. The alarm should jump very high once it detects the magnet. There it is. All right. So we'll air out the smoke detector, reset that pole, and then we can reset the system. There we go, back to normal. As mentioned earlier, the AFC 600 is nearly identical to the AFP 400. This AFC 600 is in a later style mini cabinet from the early 2000s, but it can also use the full size cab 3 and cab 4 enclosures, which can hold additional output circuits, audio modules like the AMG1, telephone modules like the F57, and many other components. Here's with the door open. We have a dress panel here. The keypad layout is identical to the AFP400 CPU module. Check the batteries real quick. These are fresh batteries, so that looks pretty good. And one output module can be added to the mini cabinet. This is a CRM4 relay module. These can also be used on the AFP400, and they originated with the System5000 panels. These two relays control the sounder base down there. But there's also a mini module inside the panel, and this relay could be used to trigger the base manually, like this. Here we are with the dress panel removed. Got some batteries right here. The CPU module, which is very similar to the EFP400. Got your two SLC loops here. At maximum, the AFC 600 can hold up to 636 devices across the two SLC loops. ACS terminals, terminal mode enunciator block for the FDU80, and then two RS-232 ports, one for PC and one for printers. This is the harness to the power supply, connectors to any output circuit modules. Right here is the firmware chip, which is smaller than the one on the AFP400. Then this ribbon cable goes down to the power supply. The AFC600 uses the MPS6 power supply. Its layout is identical to the MPS400 power supply used on the AFP400. Got your auxiliary power here, four relays, and four signal circuits. The MPS400 and the MPS6 are interchangeable, so you can use either one on the AFP400 and the AFP600. The menu interface on the AFC600 is also very similar to the AFP400, though there are some differences. The read status is the same as the AFP400, so we'll just go into programming mode. Status change mode is the same as the AFP400, so we'll go straight to programming mode. The default passcodes can be found in the manual as usual. So we have a new option here called flash cam poll. This allows the user to set 
which SLC loops to run either flash scan or clip. So you can set each option for both the loops, both detectors and modules. So you can just have either both detectors and modules be flash scan, both of them clip, or you can have clip detectors and flash scan modules. And that could be set for both SLC loops. Utility is pretty much the same as the AP400, slightly different layout. Interestingly, the AFC600 does not have networking, even though it's pretty much identical to the AP400. Not sure why, but that's how they designed this panel. Basic programming is also very similar to the AFP400. You got your clear program, auto program, point programming, passcode, message, zone, special functions, system options, and check programming. So we can check out modify points real quick. And we'll pick, say, a detector. Let's pick the harsh detector. Loop 2, address 2. So there's the detector. It's a photo detector at heart, but it's slightly different. And the AC600 introduces a few more options like supervisory. With the flash cam protocol, there's a few different point types that can be added to these and modules as well. And output circuits and modules are pretty much the same as the AFP panels. And that concludes this overview of the AFC600 Farmland Control Panel. These panels had a very short lifespan. They were discontinued by the early 2000s following the release of the first generation Onyx panels like the NFS640 and the NFS3030. Despite its short lifespan, the AFC600 served as the foundation for many of Notifier's future panels, especially with the flash scan protocol. Considering its resemblance to the AFP400 and lacking certain features like networking, it seems the AFC600 was hastily designed to demonstrate the new flash cam protocol in a panel. Along with its short lifespan, the AFC600 is very rare nowadays. So if you happen to acquire one of these panels, you have a panel that's on par with the AFP400 as one of Notifier's best addressable fire alarm panels, and also one of the rarest. In any case, if you have any questions or comments on the AFC600, feel free to post them below. But until next time, have a nice day.